Hello, my darling Fumi Nation. How are you? <laughs> How are we? My name is Fumi Desaluvold. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, you are so very welcome indeed, my darlings. Are we living and loving the little cutesy wootsy outfit? It's super duper cute, and I am absolutely living and loving it, my darlings. I'm going out for dinner, so I just thought, let me feel this before I go. I am going to Manchester, my darlings, on the 5th of October. I cannot wait to see Fumi Nation there. I am going to be at the Laurie Theatre and it is the, the She Leads for Legacy Conference. I am so honored. Thank you very much for inviting me to be a guest speaker. I cannot wait and I am absolutely honored to be amongst the most phenomenal guest speakers of the day. Fumi Nation, I'm going to do my very best and stay behind afterwards where Fumi Nation, you can have pictures with more. I want to meet you. I love you guys. And yes, the tickets and the link is down below. $25 and up. So guys, I cannot wait to see you when? I cannot wait to see you 5th of October. Why are we here? Because Diddy is on suicide watch as he should be as he should be. You know why? I don't think that it's fair to the victims. You cannot cop out. You cannot take the easy way out like Epstein did. You have to serve your time and it's important for the victims. I read a very disturbing story the other day and it really, really bothered me. Dawn Richards talked about how she went for lunch to this big exec lunch. Diddy and other big execs were there. So she accused Diddy of ill treating her, abusing her, denying her food, denying her rest, all of these things. It's terrible. Richard said in the complaint that Combs would often come into her dressing room unannounced. While she was working with a stylist, he would touch her bottom and around her chest to signal where the clothes should fall according to the lawsuit. Combs also regularly asked her to take down her underwear in rehearsals and would smack Richard on her bottom and conducted meetings in only his underwear, the complaint alleges. If Richard rebuffed Combs' advances, he would retaliate by leaving her off of songs and performances according to the complaint. Danny T. Kane disbanded in 2009, but Richard continued working with Combs as a member of the newly formed Diddy Dirty Money, a trio that included her, Combs, and singer-songwriter Kalena Harper. Richard says that she began fearing for her physical safety after she and Harper went to Combs' home in Los Angeles. Do you see what I'm talking about? Don't go to Homes. Don't go to Homes. Do not go to Homes. Let me tell you, don't go to Homes. You come to my house. You do not know whether I have a secret closet. You don't know whether I have an escape. You don't know if I have a basement. You don't know whether I have a loft. You do not know the ins and outs of my home, which means that I can keep you here against your will. It's a trap as pretty and as glossy as it looks. Oh, they live in the hills. Don't go. Do not go. You are walking into a trap. Let me continue. Combs came into the kitchen and began berating Ventura for not cooking his eggs correctly and proceeded to throw the pan at her and drag her up the stairs, the lawsuit claims. Ventura filed lawsuit against Combs in November of last year and settled out of court money. Months later, surveillance video appeared to show Combs kicking and dragging Ventura in the hall of a hotel. Ventura alleged Combs paid the hotel staff 50k to secure that footage of the incident. On another occasion, Richard alleges Combs pulled Ventura out of a van by her neck and pinned her to the ground, punching her in the face in the bathroom of a party and punched her in the tummy at a dinner in front of several high-profile celebrities, including Interscope founder Jimmy Levine. Levine and Combs had allegedly just struck a 50 million distribution deal for Combs' music. 
even after Mr. Lavin watched Mr. Combs commit such a violent assault in front of numerous high-profile witnesses, the bad boy interscope deal took place and remained in effect, providing Mr. Combs with immense financial rewards and enabling him to commit further acts of violence without fear and repercussions, the complaint says. Interscope Geffen AM Records is named as a defendant in the suit. Richard and Harper both tried to encourage Ventura to leave Combs and were allegedly met with a litany of threats from him, such as, you want to die today? I ain't people. According to the complaint, Richard also saw the late Kim Porter, Combs' former girlfriend and the mother of several of his children, leaving a recording studio crying with face injuries. You know, when, um, I'm going to just bounce around for a little bit. When Kim Porter passed away, there is a picture that stood still for me of Kimora Lee. She was at the door of her house. And she was looking into the distance to somebody I felt or a realization that he did this, that he really did this. And she was very pensive and she looked very afraid and very alone. Because remember, her husband too is nowhere to be found. I think he's in Bali somewhere or whatever. And this all happened all the way back in the 90s. There were so many things that happened. Again, there wasn't social media. Again, there's so many things that people just would not talk about because who was going to stand up for them? You have top execs, top execs that were there, but it was all about the money. And so they did not care. And this is somebody's daughter. This is somebody's child. This is somebody who said, be careful out there. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, come on home. But when we're young and we have stars in our eyes and we are naive and we don't know what the world can bring, you really don't know. You go out into the wild and you are eaten up, spat out, and the bones are in crumbs. My mother always told me, my mother chaperoned me for all of my fashion shows. Every single one, she chaperoned me and we came on home. She said for me, come home. When you finish the party, finish the event, come home. You don't drink, you get headaches. Come home, because you will not know what's happening to you until it's too late. For whatever reason, that just stuck with me. That just stuck with me because for me, I considered that to be a hidden disability. <laughs> it was a situation where I react very badly to alcohol. And if you do it and you're pressured, take a little bit, take a little drink, take this or whatever. You do not know what's going to happen. Needless to say, we have none other than the fabulous Aubrey O'Day. Aubrey O'Day has been out here in these streets and she has been talking about Didi for a very, 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 very long time she has been talking about him for a very 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 what very long time and so she says and this is from a uh, billboard things are finally changing what did i say in the other episode when i said that diddy really was coming to a head coming to meet his past because the people that were in power then are no longer there and that things are finally changing those were my last words that i said before i popped that puppy up what do i think like i have mentioned before i met diddy uh 20 20 odd years ago 20 and change because i'm 55 now we're all 55 that's the irony we were all born in 69 um jennifer lopez diddy mariah carey we were all from that 90s crew and i was living in new york and i was modeling and i went out to la i got booked for his music video and that was how i was out there and at that time Jennifer was there dating Diddy, serving him and everything. Darling, you don't even know what happened in the 90s. Needless to say, why has all of this come out now after all of these years? It occurred to me when I got the news of this, his recent arrest. It is because those that were in power are no longer there. Things have changed.
Aubrey is hopeful for the future following Sean Diddy Combs' arrest. The purpose of justice is to provide an ending and allow us the space to create a new chapter. Women never got this. I feel validated. Today is a win for women all over the world, not just me. Things are finally changing, the former Danny T.K. member tweeted. O'Day has a long-time history of speaking out against Diddy. Danny T. Kane was formed back in 2005 on Diddy's Making the Band, and the group was also later signed to his bad boy record label. O'Day was kicked out of the group in 2008, and she alleged on Call Her Daddy in 2022 that her departure was related to her refusal to fulfill non-music requests for the rapper. 110%. Not all of us are strong. Not all of us are strong. And I remember when Aubrey was out here saying these things, little, little whispers, and she was shut down majority of the time. I don't want Diddy to get out of this easily. He has to serve the time. He has to take accountability for what he has done. He's still arrogant. He's coming into the courtroom and he's squeezing up his face and he's complaining and his lawyer is talking about that it's inhumane, how he's, he's detained in prison. What about the inhumane things that you did to all of these victims? What about the trauma? Because for me, I can watch a film and I can be traumatized to the point that I think about it constantly for weeks on end. I cry over it because it is so heinous. It is so atrocious that I say to myself, how can another human being do this to another human being? That's what I say to myself. And I thank the father because I saw it in the comments. I was lucky. I was lucky because I didn't go to the parties. I was lucky because I had a man that loved me and really came and scooped me up right out of LA. I was lucky because I have a very strong stance. I truly know who I am. And if I don't want to do something, I won't do it. I just won't do it. And the more that you try to push me, the more my eyes really open and I'm like, you're after something else. That's just straight up tea. It's not that I was better than any of these girls. And that's where, that's where the emotion comes in. Because these girls, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault, Natalia, that you went to a club. I was at a club too, on the other side of town. And you got shot in the face. And uh, 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 Cassie, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. So I say to all the girls out there, if you want to be a model, you want to be an actor, you want to be in film, you want to be in music, you want to be out in show business, please be careful. Please be careful. You can come to me. I've done it all. I'm 55. I've lived my life. I think I've lived more than some people that are my age. I was a pageant girl. Yes, I was. I was a model. Yes, I was. I was acting. Yes, I was. I've been out there in these streets. I took all the good and I moved on and I pour it out here on YouTube. But there was always a dark side. And what saved me was I did not drink alcohol. That was just it. And I didn't go to people's houses. Even when I was a young girl, <laughs> my mom and dad would be like, what are you doing in somebody else's house? You can eat your food here. Come to your house and eat your food. They were always, well, I told you, eat before you leave the house. So I never starved. And when I say I never starved, I never starved for that gig, for that show, because I am good enough. I am more than good enough. If you hire me, I'm bringing in more than what you hired me for. I'm that chick. I'll say it anywhere till the day I die. That's how I have always been. I'm fabulous. If I didn't get the job, I didn't get the job. I just said, you know what? It wasn't for me. But I never felt I had to compromise, insult my God-given talent and go to your house to do one or two things to get the job. And guess what? Let me tell you girls, just before I go, auntie's talking here. You will never get the job. You know why? Because you have given him what he wanted and he used that as a carrot to get you in. Now that he's gotten all of the cookies, he don't need you for nothing.
Now you feel bad. Now you feel used. Now you feel abused. Now you feel ashamed. Now you feel embarrassed. Now you don't even want to meet him eye to eye. Do not compromise. And if he tells you, come and do this to get that, tell him, Auntie Fumi said that you're telling lies. And Auntie Fumi told me I should go home. Take your little tail and go home. Because we have to be mothers to other children when their mothers are not there. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, hit the notification button, and I will see you in Manchester, 5th of October.